All right, hello boys and girls. Today we will be reading a story and then we will be practicing retelling the story. So the story for today is The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. So I want you to just look at the cover, think about what you notice. All right, and this right here is our title page. The title is The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. The author is Eugene Trevisas. So Eugene wrote the words of this story. And the illustrator is Helen Oxenbury. So Helen drew the pictures. All right. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black. The second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it is time for you to go out into the world. Go and build a house for yourselves, but beware of the big bad pig. Don't worry, mother, we will watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. Soon, they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please, will you give us some of your bricks? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Here they are building their house. The very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer and he knocked the house down. The three little wolves only just managed to escape before the bricks crumbled and they were very frightened indeed. We shall have to build a stronger house, they said. Just then, they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the beaver, and he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. No sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were playing battle door and shuttlecock in the garden, and when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. The pig rang the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. Just then, they saw a truck coming along the road carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Please, will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars and armor plates, and some heavy metal padlocks? They said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros, and he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass and some reinforced steel chains because he was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. 
So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, and lit the fuse, and the house blew up. The three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different, but what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please, will you give us some flowers? asked the little wolves. With pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. One wall was of marigolds, one of daffodils, one of pink roses, and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers, and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house, and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. Next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the bluebell at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of the flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then, he decided to become a big, good pig. He started to sing and dance the tarantella. At first, the three little wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick, but soon they realized that the pig had truly changed. So they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First, they played pig pog and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. They offered him tea and strawberries and wolf berries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived happily together ever after. The end. All right, I hope you enjoyed that story. It's kind of a silly one. It's like the opposite of the three um, little pigs and the big bad wolf. So now we are gonna practice our retelling skills. So I hope you are listening closely to the story so you can answer these questions. So the first question, I want you to think about who the characters, I wrote here, number one, characters. Think about who the characters in this story were. Okay, so remember the characters are the people or the animals that you see over and over in the story. So the characters in this story are the three little wolves and the pig. So even though we saw a rhinoceros in the story and we saw the three little wolves mom, they aren't the main characters because they only showed up on one page, one or two pages. Okay, number two 
is the setting. So I want you to think about what the setting of this story is. Okay, so the setting for this story is kind of all over. It kind of took place in lots of different places outside in the different places where the wolves built their houses. Okay, number three, I want you to think about what happened in the beginning of our story. What happened in the beginning of our story? So in the beginning of the story, the three little wolves were with their mom and she was telling them that it was time for them to go and build their own house. But she warned them to be careful of the big bad pig. So in the beginning of the story, you see the wolves with their mom and then they set off to build a house. Okay, now I want you to think, what happened in the middle of this story? We talked about the beginning, what happened in the middle? So in the middle of this story, we see the three little wolves building their different houses. So the first one they built was made of brick, and then they built a house made of concrete, and then they built a house made of barbed wire and iron and metal, and then they built a house made of flowers. So in the middle of our story, we see the wolves building different houses, and every time the pig destroys their house. Okay, now think about what happened at the end of our story. So at the end of our story, we see that the pig does not destroy the flower house. Instead, the pig becomes friends with them. All right, and the last thing I want you to think about, this says heart of the story. So this is kind of like, what was this story about? If this story was trying to teach us a lesson, what do you think the lesson the story was trying to teach us was? Think about the heart of the story. So I think the heart of this story was when the big bad pig decided to become the big good pig. And I think it's teaching us that some people make bad choices, like the pig was making bad choices when he was destroying the wolves' houses. <clears throat> but every person, even if it's a pig or an animal in this case, can make good choices. So just because someone makes bad choices, it doesn't mean that they will always make bad choices. They can turn around and make a good choice. And the three little wolves became friends with him. So even if someone's making bad choices, it doesn't mean that we stop being their friend. We still want to be nice and kind to them. All right, so I want you all to continue to be practicing your retelling of stories when you hear a story. Maybe you have a story read to you online. I want you to try retelling the story to make sure you really understood it. So remember to be thinking about the characters, the setting, what happened at the beginning of the story, what happened at the middle of the story, what happened at the end of the story, and what was the story trying to teach you? What was it mostly about? All right, I hope you all enjoyed this.